fellow explorers on this very special part two of my 250,000 subscribers celebration. I wanted to watch and react to one of my very first travel videos. This first is in fact before I even started the Yellow Productions travel channel. This video I created in 2007 visiting Taipei, Taiwan. And so let's take a look at this where a pre-Yellow Productions travel guide from YouTube looks like. We'll then take a look at some 2014 Yellow Productions travel guides to Taipei, Taiwan uh, and see how we've evolved and talk about that. Um, but it's really, uh, I just thought it was an interesting view. And I've never been able to show this footage before because I always used music that was copyright that I couldn't put on YouTube. But now with the magic of AI editing solutions, I was able to run some software to take out all the music, replace it with some new music uh, that I pay for that uh, doesn't get flagged for copyright. Though there will be some times where maybe I sound kind of strange. That's the AI trying to take the music out of the background. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and I'll talk through and react to this first video as we go. This one's titled Taipei Taiwan 2007. Yeah, and so one of the first things you see is that intro. Lai Dao, Taiwan. Hello, and welcome to Taiwan. Let's go see the sights. And how is that Chinese practicing my basic linguals? Those intros I would never do anymore because people would leave as they saw the map. But let's get back to Taipei 101, the tallest building. Taipei 101 is the world's second largest building. and. It's right there. It can be seen from almost any place in Taipei City. It has the world's second facet elevators that has a very unique shape. That is the shape of bamboo. And next to Taipei 101, they built a large outdoor shopping plaza called Xinguang Sanyue Xinyi Jinsijie. That was OC Girl, in case you're wondering. This area is Ximenting, which is where all the high school students come to uh, party and uh, let it out by uh, eating or playing arcade games. I also like to do these different intros to different sections, which would probably be things that would lose people today. Just opened in June of 2007, takes you four kilometers up into the mountain, famous for their tea. I love to do time lapses back in the day. We're at the Yuan Shi Yuan Tea House, and uh, about twenty dollars for a pot of tea. It is some fabulous tea. And we begin the tea ritual by placing tea leaves into the teapot. After the leaves are in the pot, we then fill it with hot water. Very carefully, of course. Fill it all the way to the top, and that's okay, because when we put this lid on, you're gonna see a little water come out of the pot. That means it's good. We wait about 40 seconds, and then we move to the next step. Once 40 seconds has passed. By the way, what what do you think? How, how have I aged? Have I aged well? Do uh, the 2007 to 15 year ago, Chris, do we, do we look fairly similar still? Now the way you pour the tea, you don't pour it like a normal teapot. To pour it into here, you just you begin to pour and then you put the whole thing in. That's actually really how you do it. <laughs> so after your tea is brewed, you pour your tea into the big cup. But the big cup, it's not for drinking out. You take your little cup, which is your drinking cup, put it on top of the big cup. You turn it over without spilling. You lift up this cup and you smell the aroma. After you smell, you can then drink the tea. It's all about the finger. It's all about the finger. Completely different. There's a crime happening. Someone call the police. Uh, we're in the police station. I'll get him. 
Dr. Sun Yat-sen was the founder of modern China and the person who overthrew the Qing dynasty. And doctor, I'd like a hippopotamus for Christmas. Okay, so now you have to imagine my favorite Christmas song playing, the one that says, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Only hippopotamus will do. No rhinoceros. Okay, I'm back to talking again. The number one priority for freshman students from the Chancellor was to not park their bikes illegally. Apparently, these students didn't really get the message. Night markets in Taiwan are literally everywhere. The vendors at night markets specialize in chow chu, which literally translates to small eats. Each vendor at a night market typically specializes in one snack. The food selection ranges from my most favorite, watermelon juice and banana milk, to my least favorite, stinky tofu. Which, man, it really stinks. You can also buy non-food items such as shoes and socks. The most famous night market in Taiwan, the Hua Xi Tourist Market, is also known as Snake Alley because restaurants there specialize in cooked snake and also turtle. You get to pick the snake or the turtle from a case for your cooking pleasure. Definitely food and night markets were always things I like to see. And I love seeing the things in the chat. Brian says my acting skills are on point. Though Kathy says too much acting. But I'm talking about Din Tai Fung now. So let's look at this. It was rated by the New York Times as one of the world's top 10 restaurants. Din Tai Fung is famous for their Xiao Long Bao, which are also known as soup dumplings and contain pork and a small amount of soup inside. Din Tai Fung restaurants always feature a window where you can see the dumplings being made and then steamed. So the proper way to eat Shaolong Bao is to put it in your spoon and nibble on the top. Tasty. Mm. By the way, you have to imagine some music in the background there. One of the more popular desserts in Taiwan is shaved ice. It was hot and ice at home. One of the most popular shaved ice places. Okay, that, that AI music removal on this one is doing really bad. But this shave ice place is really phenomenal. And going through all the different foods that I like. Banana milk. Let's take a look at this one. I really like banana milk. <laughs> Boy, I sound, I sound really rough in that one. Mark asked if I ate a snake. I did not eat any snake in Snake Alley. And really, it's only tourists that eat the snake in Snake Alley. There's no locals that eat the snake in Snake Alley. Uh, Wash Kauset says, can you imagine the night markets post-COVID? I wonder their condition. Now, they're outside, so actually I'd imagine still a fair bit of people at the night markets, though maybe not quite as busy as they used to be. Now, as we look at this, we notice the video smaller this way. You know, this was back when the recording was on mini, uh, mini DV tapes. I actually recorded this on tape before recording on SD cards. And a lot of these scenes, I would just record the like the B-roll, the shot, and then do the, the voiceovers later, which proved to actually be really quite difficult and take a long time. Dohua bean curd. This is served cold. It is a great dish for summer. Uh, ice cream with sweet potato. Sometimes Taiwan is called the sweet potato because that's how the island looks. Just too cute to eat. Mm, or maybe not. I have to say, it looks better than it tastes. This magnificent parade is on its way to the Longshan Temple, which is uh, one of the main tourist attractions in Taipei. It's conveniently located near the Snake Alley, and uh, patrons come here to worship the gods by bringing offerings and burning incense. Bye bye, Taiwan! Zaijin!
Okay, fellow explorers, so... Oh, that's not the that's not the button that I wanted. Uh, this is the button that I want. Too many buttons. Okay, fellow explorer. So, what do you think of the Chris and the Yellow Productions before before YouTube before 2007, 15 years ago? Uh, OC girl in the chat says uh, her mom. So my mother-in-law says I looked uh, I looked like a high school kid. Yeah, that young, that young, young Chrissy there in 2007. Kathy says, well done. Uh, Garrett says, love Taiwan. I wish I can go back again. And by the way, we're not done looking at Taiwan videos. I got a few more queued up for you, but I want to take some conversation first and then uh, we'll get into some of those. Uh, Brandon says, I can definitely tell it was old with the video aspect. Yeah, and like carrying around tapes meant I couldn't really shoot a lot because I only had like 60 minutes on each tape and you can only carry so many tapes. So now I definitely shoot a lot more videos than I did. But one of the challenges or the, like my perspective has like ra radically changed from shooting that video to shooting videos today in 2007, I would just, we would travel and I would bring the camera around and, and we'd shoot things. And then afterwards I'd come home and be like, what am I going to do with all of this video? What am I going to do with it? I have no idea. Uh, Brooklyn says, how old were you back then? I was I was 15 years younger, so that would have made me 25-ish. Uh, um, Samford Bridge says, my shirt looked reddish. Yes, that was indeed before the Yellow Productions shirt. Um, not many who started out in 2007 are still around. Uh, thank you. Way to go on your longevity. Thank you. Oliver says, great job. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that one from uh, the archive. Jenny Fied says, my son just heard you talking upstairs, eating dinner. Oh, yeah, I set my reminder for tonight's live stream watching now. Well, welcome, and I'm glad the reminder worked. Uh, this was done in 2007. Electric Quick, my dad, says, highly entertaining to see a little bit of blast from the past. Uh, and uh, Alex says, you haven't aged a bit. You look a little less HD, but... That's it. Uh, and the Horde says, also before the Yellow Productions went yellow. It is indeed, uh, and it is indeed the pre-YouTube era. Um, all right, and so some people, uh, yeah, so Tony says, OC Girl is here. That's treating himself. Hi, OC Girl. Thank you for making these wonderful videos for Chris. Thank you, Tony, for those kind words. Now, uh, some people asked, uh, is OC Girl from Taiwan? And OC Girl is indeed in Taiwan. Uh, and so there's actually, before I go on to some of the other videos that I want to share from 2014 and talk more about Taiwan, there is one um, kind of issue that I want to talk about brewing in the world, something that happened in Orange County. I've gotten a lot of um, questions from a lot of people, and so I just I wanted to talk about it before we go on. And that is, um, unfortunately, last weekend there was a uh, church shooting in Orange County at the at the um, <clears throat> Irvine Taiwanese Presbyterian Church. Uh, it happened on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Uh, someone came into this church with a weapon uh, to shoot up the congregation. Um, now, this congregation, they meet uh, on Sundays at a different church that isn't theirs. The name of the church is called the Geneva Presbyterian Church. It's about 10 miles from our house. And you might say, Chris, why, why are you talking about this? Why are you talking about this in this video? Um, we, we actually have a personal connection to this church. The pastor of the Irvine uh, Taiwanese Presbyterian Church was actually the pastor who married O.C. Girl and I. That's the pastor of the church right there. That's as I'm waiting for O.C. Girl to come down the aisle. Um, so we have a close connection to the congregation. Now, if you haven't heard the news on this one or you haven't um, followed the news, the rest of the story is the gunman comes in uh, locks the doors, glued the locks, booby-trapped it. The gunman was not a member of the congregation. He actually drove from Las Vegas to California to commit this uh, heinous crime. Uh, four of the churchgoers were shot. Um, one of the churchgoers was shot uh, and fatally uh, wounded. Um, now, that man was a doctor, and he actually tried to subdue the shooter charging at him. That's unfortunately why he was shot. Uh, that allowed the pastor, Pastor Chang, who married O.C. Girl and I, to uh, hit the shooter on the head with a chair while the other members of the congregation came in uh, and hogtied him. It's all uh, very sad, and if you see me trying to relay this in a very unemotional state, it's because I tried to make some notes on this, and um, I was very sad as I'm uh, putting these notes together. Uh, but 
Um, why I'm talking to you about all of this uh, is the, the church and some of our friends have actually set up a GoFundMe page, which I have a link in the description below. Uh, if you were so inclined and able to, and you'd like to help out the families or the survivors in this case, uh, you can visit that GoFundMe page. We're trying to raise $100,000 for the family of the victims. Uh, if it's easier for you to just give on YouTube, uh, I have enabled um, super chats for this video. So any proceeds from super chat, I will donate uh, to the um, victims of this heinous crime. If you'd like to buy a shirt today, I will also donate proceeds from the shirt sales for the next week. And if you're watching the archive, um, there's also a thanks button as well. If you donate to that, uh, I will make sure to pass those on uh, to the survivors of this tragedy. Tra tragedy. Tragedy. Um, uh, anyway, uh, sorry to sorry to bring us down here, but I think there's things we can certainly do um, to help out the people uh, that are surviving in this. Uh, we have a connection to this. Uh, Grant Yenny, I want to say uh, thank you very much. Grant Yenny uh, has put in the first super chat of fifty dollars. That's very generous of you, Grant. Thank you very much on behalf of the survivors. Uh, and Grant was one of the ones who reached out before uh, and said, Chris, how, how are you doing? I know you all are closely connected to that congregation. So Grant, thank you very much. Uh, I also see MP uh, has also matched Grant uh, and MP has given $50. MP, thank you very much as well. You are so kind. Um, and uh, I see there's a number of people who are connected here. Uh, questions, Mark asks if it's in Irvine. It is like uh, 10 miles south of Irvine. So it's, it's like the neighboring city to Irvine. Um, and there was an article about it saying how the, um, the gentleman, the doctor who um, charged the shooter, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not lost on the congregation uh, that that man lost his life to save the lives of others. Um, all right. Well, uh, thank you for your support. Uh, Norma has also given $50. Norma, uh, thank you very much. I uh, and the survivors and the congregation appreciate it. Uh, Brooklyn Joe, thank you for the $19.99. I appreciate that as well. And Alex, thank you for your support as well. I appreciate it. And Brandon says, uh, nearly $200 in less than a minute. And so thank you, uh, Yellow Productions family, for, for doing what we can. It truly, it truly means a lot. Um, and so that you also know that this goes to the, a good cause, it turns out that the, um, the person who is running the um, GoFundMe page, you know, it's not just a phantom one. Actually, uh, OC Girl was the Sunday school teacher for uh, the person who's put up that GoFundMe page. So we know them well. We know it's going uh, directly to this congregation. Uh, and uh, Australia, uh, from Kathy, uh, thank you for your support as well. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> right. And so uh, OC Girl just adds in to clarify, the name of the church uh, is the Irvine Taiwanese Presbyterian Church, but they started in Irvine and they've been meeting in Laguna Hills. Okay. So I want to bring us back uh, to the Taiwan conversation now. Thank you uh, for all of your support now and continued into the future. Uh, and OC Girl says thank you everyone as well. Um, so... Uh, now I just kind of, let's go ahead and dive into Taiwan in 2014 and take a look what a Yellow Productions video looks like seven years later after the one we saw before. Um, one of the biggest differences, I really tried to make these five minutes. I tried to make this faster. This one is titled uh, The Best of Taipei in 36 Hours. This one's on YouTube, so you may have seen it, but we'll talk about it and react to it as we go. Yellow Productions presents 36 Hours in Taipei, Taiwan. I'm Chris. I'm And today we're going to be showing you what you can do on a weekend trip to Taipei, Taiwan. From Taoyuan International Airport, the best way to get to the city. By the way, it still uh, never fails to amaze me the number of people that think the voice of Topher is me. It's OC Girl, now you know. Uh, and something I used to do more of is these driving scenes that I'm actually getting back into more because I realize the driving scenes actually add a lot of uh, flavor as we're getting into some place. You'll also notice in the corner, I put the little yellow logo and there was the intro too. Uh, and this one has yellow with two W's. 
Whatever hotel you're staying at, there's bound to be a night market nearby. Just ask at the front desk where the closest one is. Your first morning in Taipei, wake up 8 a.m., get on the metro, the red line, to the Ching Hai Shek Memorial Hall Station. Here you can check out the National Theater, the Ching Hai Shek Memorial, that way, and then the National Concert Hall over on the left. In front of the Ching Hai Shek Memorial Hall, you'll also notice the yellow shirt has made an appearance here, though this yellow shirt does have yellow with two W's. The Ching Hai Shek Memorial Hall is a rather large building behind me there. It's a uh, memorial to Ching Hai Shek. It looks similar to the Lincoln Memorial, except instead of Lincoln on the throne, it's Ching Hai Shek on the throne. Try to come right at 9 o'clock to see the changing of the guards. If you miss that one, it also happens every other hour on the hour until 6 p.m. After Ching Hai Shek Memorial Hall, we're going to get an early lunch. We're going to take the MRT Red Line one stop to Dungmen Station, just one stop away from Ching Hai Shek Memorial Hall. And we're going to go eat at Din Tai Fung, Taiwan's most famous restaurant. So this is one where back in the day I would tell you we're going to take the MRT, but not actually show it to you. Today I would show you the ride and you're like, Chris, are you back at Din Tai Fung again? Weren't you there in the last video? It's been seven years since I made that one, but it turns out the line was too long so we ate these noodles instead. It's just right around the corner from Din Tai Fung if the wait's too long. The number one thing to get here is their bowl of noodles, minced pork, and garlic. Before you eat it, make sure to mix it up, nice and mixed. So this is traditional Taiwanese style, the way they make these noodles. They make them the way they did in 1895. You can see right by the front window, they're still making them traditional style. Okay, well now that we've finished those noodles. So uh, this, is, this is definitely a change where back in the day I would just kind of like show the noodles but not eat them. And of course everybody said, Chris, I want to... I want to see you eating things on, you need to eat it on camera and you need to react to it on camera. I, I guess maybe I, I might have done that a little more with this one, but this shave ice is delicious. ...is the three flavor shave ice with mango, strawberry, and kiwi. On a hot day, it's particularly refreshing. And if you'd like a souvenir to bring back home, they have magnets that are the shave ice magnets. So you can remember your bowl of shave ice forever. Once you're done with your shave ice, spend some time exploring the narrow alley. By the way, I still have that magnet on our refrigerator today. It's one of the things I always collect from every trip is a magnet uh, that says the city where we went to. You can hold an umbrella and ride a bike at the same time. You can do that on a rainy day. Too. Once you're done wandering around this neighborhood, next up we're going to hit up Taipei 101, which is just down the street that way, one of the world's tallest buildings. Also, if you're coming to Taipei, make sure you bring an umbrella because it rains here almost all the time. It can go from sunny to rainy in the course of an hour. To get to Taipei 101, take the MRT Red Line to the Taipei 101 stop. Who needs a tour guide or a tour bus when you have the Taipei MRT? Clean, bright, friendly, and convenient. If you get out of the MRT, you'll see, guess what? Din Tai Fung there on the <laughs> In this scene, if you saw my lips moving but the vocals not matching it, it's because I had no audio. One of the biggest challenges using wireless microphones is making sure everything is on. Uh, and so this one I had to dub over later. People often say, Chris, um, you know what? It might sound better if you just record everything at home instead of on site. It is so hard to do that then. And it doesn't seem like it's spur of the moment. So I really try to record everything I can on location to make it sound and feel right. Uh, and then also just to make sure that I remember what I'm gonna say. If I wait till I get home, I, I forget half of what in the moment uh, was gonna be. ...of Ximen, Taipei's equivalent of Harajuku, a hot spot for youth culture. If you're one of those people who likes to start your morning with a morning hike on your first morning or your last morning, if you have time before your flight, hike on up Elephant Mountain for some wonderful views of Taipei 101. Thanks for watching. Click on the flag to subscribe or follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Plus. Links are in the description. Or you might be interested in watching one of these other videos. Click either one to watch. Boom, ba, ba, bum, bum. Bum bum ba ba bum 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 ba ba bum bum ba ba bum 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 ba ba bum 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 bum. So one of the biggest changes between 2007 and 2014 was also I started really looking at destinations and video as a series. So in 2007 or at the beginning, I would do one video of all the stuff from a destination. And in 2014, I started to say, what are all the videos that I could do? How could they logically connect together? How could one lead from the other so that if you enjoyed one, you might want to watch the other one that you know it's there that I could reference there. And that's what you saw of that end screen. That was obviously when YouTube had annotations and you could click on each one of those different ones. Um, 
Also, I've seen some more uh, support from the church. Uh, I see Points Traveler. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Uh, and I also see uh, Carmen as well. So uh, thank you very much, Carmen and Points Traveler. Now, one of the other changes, changes, a uh, mindset I had to adopt is really the notion of taking selfies for thumbnails. The thumbnail is a big part of a video and I think actually many of you are here because you might have liked the thumbnail for this video. And the thumbnail was obviously something I had to stand in front of that night market and say, um, hey, I'm gonna stand there with a really excited face with that background so I could use that as a thumbnail. 2007, I would take very few pictures of me, most pictures of scenery, most pictures of OC Girl and Topher. Now we'll go on a trip and there are hundreds of pictures of Chris uh, in different various poses. Happy, actually really happy because it's the YouTube face. Unhappy, mm. shocked, surprised thinking because I never know what videos I'm, I never know what live streams I might do later that that thumbnail could come in handy and so I do all those various poses in all whole bunch of different places uh, and then pick the best one uh, as I get back. <clears throat> now um, 2014 was also digital cameras so you notice that was in HD finally it was a widescreen we saw the yellow shirt showed up uh, videos this was back in the day when people wanted short videos. I wasn't doing 20 minute videos. They were all five minutes or less. Uh, and then if we go to kind of the now, now I'll outline and research videos before we go. I was still, I had the topics, but I didn't, I didn't really flesh them out. It was mostly like on the spot discovery. Now I'm doing much more research, much more of a detailed outline. I would say today, I have about 50% of the words I'm gonna say in the video thought about before I'm even there. And then the other 50% are once I'm there, once I figured out, see if the things I decided to say before are actually even accurate um, to help form that a final thing. Uh, now I come up with titles for the videos before we even go as well, and ideas for the thumbnails, like I'll research good Instagram spots, places that I think I wanna take that picture so that I know I'm gonna have some good thumbnails, because if I don't, nobody's gonna watch the video because nobody will, will click on them to begin with. Uh, and so so much more gear has been the change in that originally it was one camera one camera and a wireless microphone now it's two cameras in case one breaks it's a gimbal it's multiple microphones in case a microphone breaks it's a drone it's a whole bunch of things and so uh it, it can it can sometimes be a little bit excessive all the camera gear that we bring along when we go through airport security it's a little bit like a best buy shelf uh, but sometimes we need the proper tool for the video um and uh, Carmen said for thumbnails, who knew you had to make all those faces? Well, you see them, so who knew? By the way, I'm, I'm thirsty. What am I drinking today? Today, I'm drinking some Ito N Japanese Awajiru. I think that might be how you pronounce that. This is barley grass and matcha shot. It's supposed to be healthy. It says the vivid green color comes from young barley grass and matcha, a tasty blend of antioxidants. So let's see how this tastes. So it says shake well. Shake well. Oh, and this is the color of it. Green, really healthy. Oh, that, that tastes healthy. Yeah, <laughs> that definitely tastes healthy. Mmm. I think I'll be, keep my immunity up with everything that's going on. Um, Colonel Zeppelin says, I have that French flight, French fry. French French fry, French fry plush in the back. Very cool right there. And Zachary Smith says, I was thinking about boba tea. Maybe I should have had boba tea, but <clears throat> I had this in the fridge and I haven't drank this on camera. I bought this at Tokyo Central just the other day. So turns out it's a product of Thailand, the other Thai place, not Taiwan. <laughs> Zachary says, uh, tastes healthy equals chalky. Uh, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Eric uh, says, hey, Chris. Uh, all right, hey, great. So I've got one more Taiwan video to show you and then we'll talk uh, more about Taiwan. I'll take your questions. We'll do giveaways as we usually do. I've got some Yellow Productions shirts to give away today uh, to people on the last live stream and also a couple today because the 250,000 subscriber celebration is also celebrating the launch of the black 
yellow productions crew shirts that if you if you haven't seen these you know black is the new yellow um, and so if you pick up one of these this week the the profit from those sales will also go uh, to the victims of the um, intended massacre that we talked about just a little bit earlier. If you missed that conversation, I'll just encourage you to go check it back in the archive if you're new to the live stream right now. Okay, this third video we're gonna take a look at, and I had to share this one with you. This one uh, shot the same time as the best of Taipei in 36 hours. This one is visiting Taipei Night Market, the best night markets in Taipei because I really love the night markets. So let's dive a little bit more into Taipei's night market culture, one of my favorite parts of the city. Yellow the best night market in and around Taipei, Taiwan. I'm Chris, and in this video we're going to be showing you some of the best night markets to eat out at in and around Taipei. In this video we'll visit the following night markets. Best overall for food and just food, Ningxia Night Market. Best for seafood, Keelan Night Market. Best because it's the biggest, Xilin Night Market. Best for snake, Huashi Street Night Market. Best variety, Raohe Night Market. We'll begin with the Keelung Night Market. The Keelung Night Market, while not directly in Taipei, is just a short train ride from Taipei, and it's one of the best across Taiwan, particularly known for its seafood. They've also done quite a bit with the signage here, and there's English signs on every stall, so if you don't speak Chinese, you know at least a little bit what you're getting. To get to the Keelung Night Market from Taipei Main Station, take a TRA train to the Keelung train station. The Keelung Night Market is a fairly sprawling market, but try to find the temple. The temple is the center of the market, and some of the best stalls are around the temple. Something you'll see in a lot of stands here is the Ding Bian Kuo. It's a noodle soup that has these really big noodles, shrimp, and some pork in it. It's a very mild broth. Quite tasty. This is the this is the most like awkward shooting position. If you notice, we're actually sitting at a table with some other people because that's just how it is in a lot of these night markets. You have to share tables. We have just like the tiny corner edge of the table that I'm hunched around sitting on a stool and then OC girl is about overhead shot to get that shot because it's just so crowded. So, so crowded, but so tasty. Another popular item here is tempura. Well, not Japanese tempura, but here it's actually fish cake with some sauce on it, served in a little bowl with a dainty little fork. Kind of sweet, kind of savory. And this is another shot to like get enough room. I've got like a planter right here by my head. I'm kind of like leaned back like this just to get enough room from the camera. And people said, Chris, you should have had a boba tea. The good news is in this video, I have one right, right in the back uh, of the shot actually sitting right there on the counter. It's kind of chewy, not too fishy. Only 35 new Taiwan dollars, so pretty reasonable. Next up, Xilin Night Market. The best market because it's the biggest. It's the biggest in all of Taiwan. It's not just a single street, but in fact, it's an entire neighborhood. There is a building, the one behind me, called Xilin Market. On the ground floor, there's shops. In the basement is a food court. But this entire neighborhood is actually a night market. To get to the Xilin Night Market, take the MRT Red Line to the Jintan. And so this is actually one that I think is really hurting during COVID because the Xilin night market was like entirely tourist. So I've, I've heard that area is just in, but in, all closed up now because nobody's been there to eat it. Here's Snake Alley that we saw a little bit earlier. Snake. You can even pick the one you want to eat out of the cage. The night market at Huashi Street is two blocks long. It has some decorative red lanterns and is covered, which makes it great to come to on a rainy day. The first block of the night market, in addition to the snake vendors, also has a number of souvenir shops and massage parlors. If snake isn't really your thing, the second block of this night market has some food vendors. The, the thing that I find kind of like most odd about this night market, the Huashi tourist night market is like they've created this in the center of the city and they call it tourist night market but it's actually the least representative of night markets the locals go to because it's the only one that serves snake and the locals don't go there's only the tourists that go there to gawk at the snakes 1838 dedicated to the buddhist goddess of mercy the ningxia night market is my favorite for food it's a narrow lane flanked on both sides by food stalls as well as one side having some traditional brick and mortar restaurants to get to the ningxia night market take the mrt red line to the shuanglian stop when you get out exit one 
turn left. Walk down that street. One of the most popular things at the Ningxia Night Market is the oyster pancake. Also in Chinese is the Er Atzen. Uh, here you can see it has Taiwanese oysters, it has vegetables, starch, egg, and some sweet sauce. You order from the stall two doors down, they have you sit in this room, and then they bring it to you when it's ready. If you don't like oysters, don't be afraid because they also have shrimp, or you can get half shrimp, half oyster. But even the oyster ones, they don't really taste like seafood. It's really good. You should try it out. And if you can't find that stall, good news, there's a whole bunch of other vendors that also sell oyster pancakes. Give one of them a try. And finally, Ralph Hill Street Night Market. I like this night market because it has a good variety of shops and food. It's clean, well organized, and it's compact. 600 meters on a single street. Easy to see, easy to take in without being completely exhausted and overwhelmed. To get to the Rauha Street Night Market, take a TRA train to the Songshan Station, go out the west exit, turn right on Songshan Street. So whenever you hear like I sound really different, like one I sound like I'm on the street and the other one I sound different, that's the difference between recording it on location and then recording it back at home. Check out that temple, the CEO Temple. It was established in 1753 and honors the Chinese goddess of the sea. Thanks for watching. Click on the flag to subscribe. You might also enjoy some of these other videos over here. Click either of them to watch. You'll find more links to night market videos in the description. I've got detailed videos for each of the night markets in this video. Fellow explorers, that is Taipei, Taiwan and the videos that we're going to take a look at. Now, just to kind of sum up changes and then we'll get into Q&A and we'll get into giveaways and all that sort of stuff, uh, is changes from, say, like, 36 hours in Taipei, Taiwan that you saw before. In that video, I was talking about a figurative 36 hours. Here's what here's what you might want to do in 36 hours. And I've sort of changed that up recently. Sort of the vlog style of YouTube is less about here's what you might want to do and more of, of what I did or what we did. And, and let us just show you what we did and then you could sort of make that extrapolation. Be like, oh, I, I could do the same thing. It's it's less textbooky and more uh experiential. I think one of the other things that I, I noticed just watching my older videos that I've tried to work on in my newer videos is my personal tone of voice. The older videos that you watch, my voice is much higher. Uh, and that's, I, I mean, you, you could say that could be Chris getting older and that his voice gets deeper, but that's actually a personal decision to say, my voice doesn't need to be high that I can slow it down, I can bring the bass, I can bring the bass in because the bass actually sounds a lot better on video than the, the high-pitched voices do. Um, and I've also looked at microphones that I used to record at home to say, how, how can I get some higher quality microphones that sound a lot richer, that don't sound tinny? Uh, and then one of those other like YouTube magic things that maybe you don't even pay attention to, um, but to try to make the voiceover at home less jarring from in person is I will record some natural sounds like traffic sounds or sounds in the park so that when I go from me talking on location to me talking at home it's not completely jarring that you don't hear the city anymore I've got those city sounds or those nature sounds or, or where restaurant sounds to be able to put underneath it to make it sound a little bit more like what we're doing right there um, Kathy says you have a great radio voice thank you for that Cassie I think that's a compliment you know sometimes uh, it's it's an insult when they say you have a great radio face you know because we don't want to see your face because you don't get you don't get seen on radio it's an American joke is that an Australian joke too you have a you have a you have a good face for radio um, Brandon says, excellent string of video. See the progression of your video producing style. Uh, my dad, Electric Rick, says, I like the orange shirt. All right, maybe I should bring in the orange shirt or bring back the orange shirt. Um, and uh, Carbon points out on the night market, clean, well organized. It sounds like one for me. That is definitely the best one. Um, and uh, Zachary says, Chris is much more natural compared to the first, much more relaxed and conversational compared to overacting. Yeah, I think this was what I got some feedback at some point uh, where someone said to me, Chris, you seem like you're giving a presentation, uh, and, like a formal presentation. And I would like it if you just, if you just tried to talk to me, like just talk, like, like talk to the camera or the viewer as like a person, like you would talk to somebody else. And so, um, Zachary, I appreciate that feedback. That's something I've worked hard on as well to not make it a overacted, stilted, separate 
delivery um, and try to just make everything, like I try, I try to visualize it like I'm actually talking to you. In this case, it's a lot of you, but I, I don't visualize as you. I just, I visualize as a person, that there's a person across from me that I'm talking to, that I'm trying to give this advice to, or talking about um, what I am doing. Uh, Garrett says, I think you should do audio books uh, personally. All right, Garrett, I will consider that suggestion. Thank you for that. John says, uh, your pacing and video quality has progressed. Uh, well, thank you, John. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, Valerian says, let's hear Chris's deep voice. Let's hear, uh, let's hear Chris's deep voice. I don't know. I like, it's one of those on command. You can see my voice gets higher and then the deep voice is deeper. My deep voice is deeper. But if I have the right microphone, you know, it's one of those like, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, right? It, it can, it can go like this. Now, some people asked about the, uh, and asked if that's a kazoo. What that is, that is all me, and that's all me doing that. Except I recorded it like 10 or 15 times at different octaves, and then I stacked them all together, and then the stacked of me all together then makes that intro sound like what it does. Uh, I see a super chat from Kim. Kim, thank you very much uh, for your support. Uh, and I also, Eric B., I saw your super chat, so thank you for your uh, support, Eric. Point Traveler says, uh, do your presentation skills on YouTube carry over into your day job? I, I spend a lot of time giving presentations in my day job, and so I think they're sort of both complementary. I learn things from giving presentations that carry over here. I learn things from YouTube uh, that carry over there as well. One of the things that I, I haven't really um, talked about much here on the channel, but I think it's a worthwhile time to talk about it, uh, is the San Francisco series that I recorded a few weeks ago. The reason why I was out there is I was out actually speaking at a conference in Yellow Productions capacity. I was speaking at the California Trails and Green Greenways Conference put on by the California Department of State Parks. Uh, it's an annual conference that they have for their trail managers and people associated with trails and trail supporters. Uh, and I was actually there keynote dinner speaker speaking to two or three hundred attendees of this conference talking about how online video uh, can help improve the visitor experience at California State Park. So something that I love to do is a fun experience. I don't often in my uh, YouTube capacity get in front of audiences of, like that are a lot of people that aren't um, behind a camera or this way. Uh, and so it was super fun to have a live audience for one of my presentations. All right, so uh, with that sharing, let's go on to the uh, usual thing that comes after the prepared material, which is... Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, it's officially Q&A time today. Uh, Points Traveler says, I'm surprised the Vegas Chamber Conference Vegas Chamber of Commerce hasn't invited you to be a keynote. I would love to be a keynote there. What was neat uh, at California Trails and Greenways, I actually got to meet the director of California State Park. So that was pretty cool. I had dinner with him uh, sitting there for about an hour. So that was a fun session. Uh, and I think I got them really thinking about, we should... We should make more. We should make more videos. Uh, PC says, I love your original San Francisco guide. Very useful. Uh, thanks for that, PC. It's still a popular video today. Zachary says, if you could have one food or drink uh, you're missing from Taiwan, what would it be? I, I would say the pot stickers. Like the pot stickers in Taiwan are super good. Um, the drink I'm missing is probably just like really good um, soybean juice. You know, in the US, we call it soy milk. I don't know why we call it soy milk, because it's not milk. It doesn't taste like milk. Um, but the soybean juice in Taiwan, super good. Uh, I also really like the dragon fruit, which, like, Chris, can't you get dragon fruit in other places? It's just so much better in Taiwan than it is in most places uh, that I've had it. Grant says, what was the AI program used to remove the original music? Uh, so the program I use is Descript, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T. Uh, you might have seen it talked about as, a, like, a new video editor. They're a company that's trying to really push um, transcriptions of video so that like when you're editing video, it has text that goes along with it so you can edit your video like a document. But it has a feature called Studio Sound that when you turn it on, it basically um, pulls all the music out of the video. And it actually, it worked 
it worked pretty well. This uh, video hasn't been flagged for copyright yet, which tells me that it did a decent job pulling out. We saw one section that it wasn't great at, but for the most part, it was pretty good. Uh, and Kathy says now that she's coming in August, she'll have to watch some of the San Francisco and Las Vegas videos. Uh, Kathy, uh, definitely send me a question if you've got one. Uh, Valerian says, have you tried the squid, octopus, or shark fin soup? I have had uh, shark fin soup. I'm not really a fan of it. Um, I've had squid on a stick. I've had octopus on a number of occasions. I don't know if I really like squid on a stick. I do like octopus in takoyaki, which is more of a Japanese dish. Um, then it is a Chinese dish, but it can be pretty good. Little Penny says, uh, Chris, what airline did you fly to Taiwan? Was it Chinese Airlines? If so, good in terms of price, comfort, service, and food. I'm going to answer this in a few different ways. I have flown to Taiwan on uh, EVA, EVA. I've flown to Taiwan on United Airlines. I've flown to Taiwan on Thai Airways. Um... OC Girl's mom flies exclusively there on China Airlines, back and forth from LAX. Um, so that's kind of the set. I've enjoyed all those airlines. I don't, you know, there's not one that I've been like, oh, I wouldn't fly them again. Um, but I, I think China Airlines and other airlines are both good airlines. Uh, Jay says California State Parks has a big place in my hubbies and my hearts. We both have degrees in recreation administration. Very cool. Very cool. Hope you put that degree to good use. Uh, Robot of Life says, what is your favorite boba drink? Um, hmm. I think my favorite boba drink is from the alley and I like the alleys. Um, oh, what's it called? They have their like, they call it like a deer roca brown sugar milk with boba or something that is if I have to pick one drink with boba that is my favorite one Point Traveler says which Asian country do you think has the best food Singapore I think Singapore has the best food I love the hawker centers in Singapore Garrett says what's your Hyatt of choice near Disneyland there's a Hyatt See, there's like a Hyatt place or a Hyatt house that's right on Catella and Harbor. That would be my Hyatt of choice. Larry says, how long have you been a YouTuber? Yellow Productions has been around since 2008, so 14 years. Kathy says, do you think the USA will drop COVID testing for travelers to enter? I, I hope so, because I don't think we're keeping anything out at this point. Um, though I understand there was like a whole big dialogue about it recently, and the current administration was sort of like, that's... Dropping that testing requirement is absolutely off the table because they've spent so much work to distribute test kits and all these things. But the definitely the major airlines would prefer it not to be there because it's certainly one of the things um, keeping people out. And it's definitely something that's keeping people from Americans traveling other places too. Uh, Mariel says, do you recommend Thai Airways? I've enjoyed Thai Airways. I think they're a good airline. Um, Okay, um, right. So, uh, OC Girl points out that China Airlines is not a Chinese airline, it's a Taiwanese airline. So, thank you for that clarification. It is confusing. Air China is a Chinese airline, um, but uh, Chinese, Chinese, China Airlines is not confusing. I know. Did I just confuse everybody? China Airlines is a Taiwanese flagged carrier. China Airlines is from Taiwan. Air China is from mainland China. There we go. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't hit the like button, Kathy reminds you, please hit the like button. Really helps me. really helps the algorithm. Every like that you put in it helps the Yellow Productions crew with premium bamboo for them. So I would appreciate it. And Kathy would too to hit the like button. Uh, Little Penny asks if Taiwanese people are better at speaking English than the Chinese mainland. I would say so. Uh, in in general, yes. Um, you know, in the rural parts, they probably don't speak uh, a lot of English, but I, I also think the Taiwanese uh, are more mm, welcoming or friendly to tourists than in mainland China. And uh, as a tourist, you are less likely to be scammed or be uh, conned into a price that is 10 times more than the regular price in Taiwan than you are in mainland China. Um, Sahil says, are you worried about the political situation in Taiwan? Yes, I am. Um, yeah, and Zach points out, you know, if you don't like the video right now uh, and you dislike it, let me know by hitting that dislike button twice. Just like really, really give it the thumbs down. Really let me know you don't like it. 
Uh, Travel Jack says, I'm waiting for testing requirements to drop before I travel internationally. I don't blame you. Um, it, you know, it really stops a lot of like quick, quick trips. Let me have some more of my barley matcha drink. It is really healthy tasting. Sahil says, uh, why hasn't Japan opened up to tourists? They are uh, planning to open in June slowly to tourists. They're, they're, the Japanese are very conservative, so they're being conservative in this case as well. Garrett asks, have I ever seen a concert at the Observatory in Anaheim? I have never seen a concert at the Observatory in Anaheim, Garrett. Um, Point Traveler says, really enjoyed this walk down memory lane and the Orange is the Yellow Productions as inspiring YouTuber. I found it really inspiring. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, and Ricky says, send a super chat for 1999. Thank you for your support. Uh, to the cause, Ricky. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We're up to we're up to two hundred fifty dollars for a super great cause. It's a little little counter up here. So for the first time, I've had super chats enabled. Um, so thank you, uh, everyone, for your support on that. Uh, Taz says, "Do you think it's safe to travel to TJ Mexico?" I'm going to answer this in two ways. I don't go to Tijuana, Mexico. Um, if I'm going to go into Mexico, then we go a little further down. We go into Ensenada. It's like another hour drive past Tijuana. Um, Tijuana is really just kind of a touristy border town. If you want to see real Mexico from San Diego, I would say go into Ensenada. Zachary asked, am I excited for my Weird Al concert? I am excited in September to see Weird Al. Uh, and then Kathy says, have I been given any ideas for Whistler? I've been given a lot of great ideas for Whistler. Um, so thank you, uh, plenty of explorers for that. A question I had uh, for uh, my Canadian friends and my friends that have been to Whistler that I didn't really ask in that conversation is if you have been to Whistler, um, how many nights do you recommend we go as our first time in sort of a summertime capacity like looking in September? So if you've been to Whistler, uh, let let us know. Travel Jack says when and where. Weird Al Yankovic, San Diego, September. All right. Uh, Carmen says I'm going to Weird Al too. Awesome Carmen in good company. Uh, and Travel Jack says I've seen him once in San Francisco. Little Penny says, will Las Vegas have an NBA time NBA team anytime soon? They're definitely talking about it. I mean, I think it's only time since they have like they're get they're getting all I think we're gonna see all the big major sports teams in Las Vegas uh, soon. Because so many people go there. Um, Brooklyn says, uh, hey, for Japan, will it be vaccinated tourists? I'm sure to start it will be vaccinated tourists only. Um, John says, uh, go to Whistler for like three days, but come visit Calgary. How, how far is Calgary from Whistler, John? Close? Far? Jake says, what's your favorite Weird Al song? My favorite Weird Al song is Amish Paradise, of course. Uh, and uh, Sahil says, yes, not, not one vax uh, or two, but a triple vax. Or I guess vaccinated and boosted, depending upon which one. Uh, yeah. So, OC Girl says, I can do a Weird Al rap. I, I can't. I can, I can sing the Amish Paradise. I'm a man of the land. I'm in two discipline. I got a Bible in my hand and a beard on your chin. And if you finish your chores and I finish thine, then tonight we're going to party like it's 1999. Been spending most our lives living in an Amish paradise. Churn butter once or twice living in an Amish paradise. There we go. How's that? How's that? It's better with like a musical accompaniment. This is, And by the way, if you say, Chris, please, please don't leave your day job as a YouTuber because... You know, singing won't get you anywhere. Yeah, I know singing won't get me anywhere. Uh, who's that girl says, I loved Amish Paradise. You can't go wrong with Amish Paradise. Uh, and Alex says, indeed, tonight we're going to party like it's 1899. I think it's actually 1699, but yeah, we can we can do 1899 too. Um. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, it is time for the giveaway. Uh, and in this giveaway, I'm gonna be giving away the new Yellow Productions Crew black shirts. 
if you answer my question correctly. Uh, and so my question for you today, and since we did two in the last 250K live stream, we'll do two giveaways in this live stream as well. My question for you is, in the video I showed you earlier, how many hours was it in Taipei, Taiwan? If you can answer that question correctly, how many hours were we talking about in Taipei, Taiwan in that video, then you will win one of these black Yellow Productions Crew shirts. While you're answering that question, let's announce the winners from last week. These were the lucky comments, the two people that win their Yellow Productions Crew shirts from last week's archive, and that is Amy Wadley and Kel L. How did these comments get picked? I picked the comments from last week's live stream that had the most thumbs up. Amy had seven and Kel had four. So actually, fellow explorers, you helped me pick those two videos. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, uh, Kel. And also those two comments had the most yellow uh, emojis in them. So I think that gets a lot of thumbs up as well. All right, I'm seeing a bunch of answers in the chat. And let's see who the first right answer is. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. Panjo, congratulations. You are the first lucky winner. And Kathy, congratulations. You are the second winner. Panjo, Kathy, let me know where you want your shirts to go and your size, and I will get them right over to you. How do I do that? Send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com along with Amy and Cal, the winners of last week's shirts as well. So we got four shorts going out there today. Um, Larry, we'll take a few more questions before we wrap up. Larry said, Chris, how long have you been a YouTuber? Uh, it has been 14 years as a YouTuber now. How long have I seriously been a YouTuber? You know, it's been, what? Um, you know, it was probably around that 2014 or 2015 time frame that I was like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna seriously make these videos, actually try to make them good, as opposed to just, uh, whatever, whatever I make and, and shoot works out. Uh, Carmen says, no third winner, second, you know, what, first is the worst, second is best, third is, uh, tur, no, we're not, I'm not gonna go there, it's family friendly, so we're not gonna say what third is, although that's probably a, that's probably a uh, that's probably an ele good elementary school joke, or maybe good preschool joke too. Um, Valerian put a question mark. Thirty-three. I know it's not a question, but I look for question marks for questions. So uh, there you go. Um, so he asked if I've tried uh, broadcasting on other platforms. I've never broadcasted on Twitch. I've um, like double streamed these live streams to Facebook before. Um, but I've not, uh, I don't know, I sort of stopped doing that because I found most people were just watching the live stream over here on YouTube and it created, like on YouTube, when you're part of the chat and you're all part of the same chat, it seemed to make sense when there were like some people on YouTube and some people on Facebook. I just felt like the, the community didn't seem, seem the same because some people couldn't see some people's chats and so I just kind of like doubled down on the live streams here on YouTube. But, Actually, if you haven't seen what's going on on Facebook, you know, it's interesting. We're celebrating the 250,000 subscriber celebration. Um, but actually, if you haven't checked out my Facebook page lately, I have more followers on Facebook currently than I do subscribers on YouTube. Like, I think it's, I think it's like 280 thousand uh, followers to the Yellow Productions Facebook page, which is incredible. Uh, I've seen a lot of growth there sort of during COVID and the pandemic. Uh, and if, if you're watching those and you're watching what's going on on YouTube and you're wondering like, what's the difference or what's going on over there, uh, over to YouTube, I'm publishing kind of like the, the best of Yellow Productions, like the best hits, the things that have done well on YouTube, re-editing, making them smaller, making them punchier over on Facebook. Because on Facebook, people don't search for anything uh, on like maybe on YouTube that you do instead everything is like uh, sh shared on Facebook so it just has to be like quicker and faster it's got to you know people got to like browse by it and it's got to like catch their attention in two seconds otherwise they're gone um, so it's just a whole different different form similar content different edits is what you're seeing over on Facebook um, Yoshi says I bought one of the new shirts uh, very cool Yoshi thank you for doing that and uh, your proceeds uh, will go to support support the cause uh, uh, Valerian my surfboard is in fact uh, yellow it, it sure is um, Zachary says have you seen the episode of the West Wing where they had confusion of the Taiwanese flag I've not seen that one what was 
what what was the confusion? Obviously, we know a little bit what it looks like here. Uh, Carmen says, too many platforms, pick your favorite, there are. And Yoshi says, vMix does multi-stream. vMix, which what I used to do, this does indeed do multi-stream. It will stream to three different platforms. Uh, but now I'm streaming at 1440p. I just upgraded my stream um, uh, bandwidth bitrate to 1440p, 60 frames per second. 20 megabits a second. I just upgraded my internet so we could do uh, these faster streams. So I hope you're enjoying the the video quality looking better and nicer in these uh, streams as well. So Heels says, do you have a goal of how many subscribers you want log scale to get to 1 million? I, like, I don't really look at it that way because a lot of um, YouTubers that I know that have a million subscribers, you know, they sort of set their sights there to say like, oh, that's my goal, a million subscribers. And then because that was their goal, then as soon as they get there, they're like, and now what? Like it feels, it feels kind of hollow. Uh, and and so my goal is really just to keep making amazing videos to have more people keep watching. I would certainly love to have a million subscribers. Next milestone is 500 on the way to 1 million. Uh, but really, in, in my mind, and I've said this before about why, why, one of the reasons why we enjoy doing this is to help people with their travels, to help to help you travel faster, better, cheaper and smarter. That's a whole bunch of words. Uh, but when people come up to me on the street or in an airplane or in an airport uh, or in a store and say, and say, Chris, Chris, Chris. And I look at them like, who, who are you? Who are you? Chris, 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 I love your videos. I'm like, oh, that's good. Cause I thought you were someone from elementary school that I don't recognize and you recognize me. Uh, but it really means a lot to me when people uh, say that these videos have helped their travels. What, uh, the other reason why we love doing it um, is I love the opportunities that sort of being a, I guess, bigger YouTuber opens up in the areas of um, building content. You know, being invited to um, Korea, being invited to um, Fukushima, Japan, like these places we've been invited to to record that then opens up a whole bunch of doors because we're invited to then be able to go with government or tourism department support into places that just allows us to make videos and content that we, we never could make before. So that's the, the other reason why we really enjoy uh, doing it. Uh, Jenny Fied says, Chris, your videos are top quality. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, uh, Jenny Fied. Um, and uh, Zachary says in that episode, the president barely accepted the wrong flag of Taiwan, the one of the Revolutionary Party. Yes, got it. I understand now. Uh, Sahil says, do you have any celebrity fans of Yellow Productions? I don't know. If I do, uh, they've not they've not presented themselves to me. Uh, Far Out Post asks if I'm an English teacher. I am not an English teacher. My background is in computers and computer science. Would you believe that? Would you believe this guy who makes these travel videos and talks all the time is can actually be a quite a good software developer. Uh, and actually I'm building my latest editing computer. Every computer I've ever used to do editing and things like that since I was like 15. I think I've like built the whole thing myself. Um, And uh, Rhino says, uh, I for one really appreciate your videos. Or Reno, they've been very helpful in planning my personal travels. Reno, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, uh, yes, and Zachary does point out that Kathy is a celebrity. She's a pretty big, she is a pretty big deal. I think, uh, you know, you, YouTuber that like joins in the chat and sometimes you've seen the live streams the most, uh, most of like the, like that has the most subscribers is Mark from Walter's World. Uh, he's been in here every once in a while. Uh, David's been here. Doesn't really come in live streams, but we've uh, we know him from one of our things. Uh, and uh, OC Girl says I think one of Chris's videos was used for English class in a European country. It, it was, in fact, yes, um, the Netherlands. A teacher, not a teacher, a curriculum developer for the Netherlands reached out to me and said, Chris, we'd like to use uh, your video uh, to help teach our students English. And I was like, oh, that's super cool. I am honored. Um, and actually I hear that from a lot of people that they come in to, um, they come into these videos because I speak slow enough, enunciate my words so they can understand what I'm saying. Uh, and so I think, I think that's awesome too. Um, Brandon uh, says, I agree with Kathy being a celebrity. Carmen says, I watched both you and Mark before I know you knew each other. Uh, it's awesome, Carmen. I've seen you in some of 
uh, Mark's live streams too. And uh, Mark and I are looking to do some more collab videos later this year. So hopefully that works out. Um, Danielle says, uh, what do your coworkers think of you being a YouTuber? Do they ask for travel advice, where to stay, best credit cards? I think they think it's awesome. I get a lot of feedback all the time, but people go like, you should you should watch his videos. They're really good. And so I think that's neat. People love to point out my yellow watch if other people haven't seen it. And yes, I do get hit up for travel advice a lot, but I, I, li I like dispensing travel advice. So there we go. Uh, and Yoshi says, what computer did you build? A uh, new Intel, the new Intel 12900KF, something like that. It's the... Whatever the fastest processor they just put out is the one I put in there. Um, Meritocratic Mafia says, is 250K subs enough to quit your day job and live off YouTube and sponsorship money full time? Nowhere, nowhere near, nowhere near Meritocratic Mafia. Uh, but I'm also not looking to do that. Uh, so I, I enjoy my day job as well. Uh, Malput uh, added $10 into the cause. Malput, thank you for your support. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, oh, and uh, let's here. Let's wrap up with this. Um, so he asked if I can pull a Mark Weens face. If you don't know Mark Weens, he is the uh, full-time food YouTuber who lives in Bangkok. And yeah, his face after he eats something delicious or or not, I don't know. But he always. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that is amazing. It's amazingly good. I don't know if I get my eyes quite. A, Oh, that's good. All right, well, fellow explorers, thank you for your support. Thank you for making 250,000 subscribers possible. Thank you for the $267 to a great cause today. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you 